We extend to you an invitation to join Master Eric and Homecar for the weekly program Between God and Us every Sunday evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. exclusively on Sankia Television. Between God and Us. Knowledge to free your soul. Sitarama, welcome to Between God and Us, a weekly program on Sankia Television. And today with us in studio, once again I sit with Master Eric of The Untold Truth and a special guest, an apprentice of Master Eric, who is going to enlighten us on the topic of beach mantras and what are beach. So Master Eric, once again, thank you for... Thank you, Omkar. And first of all, I want to say Sitaram, Assalamu Alaikum, Sai Ram, and good evening, everyone. Omkar, I thought I would take like a back seat today and let one of my students give the class. And I want them to understand knowledge is important for spiritual growth, you know, physical growth, mental growth, and everybody out here could do the same thing if they're just taught. So, Siobhan, his name is Siobhan Suku, and I'm glad to have you on the show also. So, at this time, start it. All right, great, great. So, it's a pleasure. You know, Masa, I just want to thank you for the opportunity, Omkar, you know, to be on the show. Right? I just want to thank you for that opportunity. And, you know, and today, Omkar, you know, I must say to the public, you know, Sitaram, you know, good evening. Omkar, today we're going to talk about like beaches because it's something that, and I would just give my history before we get into beaches, right? Like when, before I met Master, I was taught for many years how to say mantras, how to do this, how to recite this. And I learned to say it as, you know, a simple mantra that everybody knows is Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. So when I learned to do Jap, I focus on the speed, completing the job. So I was like, Om Namah Shivaya, 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 which most people does. And to the public, most people does that, hmm. right? Or like you learn a simple Ganapati mantra, which is Om Gam Ganapati Nama, Om Gam Ganapati Nama. But when I met Master, and you know, now I'm learning, I'm doing a spiritual penance to enhance myself, you know, then when I start reciting mantra, I realized Master started to Stop. No. That is not how it is. And I realize now, by doing research and from learning from Master, it's, I was completely doing something wrong. Or I was not doing it efficiently to get the maximum benefits. Right? So, that's why, you know, I really wanted to do this topic. So that somebody at my age, somebody like myself, could develop to get the maximum benefits when it comes to doing devotion, whether it's job or reciting anything. And um, we're going to get into mantras and beaches and how we incorporate the two. Right? So, Omkar, if I were to ask you, what is your basic understanding of a mantra? Just off the top of your head. Well, like I heard it said that it's an affirmation. Mm -hmm. But in the Sanskrit language. Right. So it's a combination of mm -hmm. Sanskrit sounds that means, that has a meaning to it. Good. So, so that's, that's a good explanation. But then we have to understand where did the word mantra come first, come from? For we to understand why we have a mantra in place. So the word mantra in Sanskrit came from two root words, which the first word is manas. Manas means the mind, right? Tra means tool. In Buddhism, it said that mantras are basically thoughts, controlling thoughts, and using thoughts as a tool to focus the mind on a specific objective. That is the essence of a mantra. It could, it's mostly in Sanskrit and Hindi and so on. But the purpose of a mantra is to really harness the mind 
and focus it on our objective. So like when you're doing job for Lord Shiva, your mind's supposed to be on some form of Lord Shiva doing the job. So it's the mantra supposed to be able to give it a name. That's why most mantras have the name of a deity. So it's Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva for the mind to focus, to create the best, the best objective, to achieve the, the best, right? So in understanding, so now we have a better understanding of mantras, right. right? And it's used throughout. It's not just in Sanskrit and Hindi, it's, it's in all language. It's in Urdu, it will be, it will be in um, Arabic. All different languages utilize mantras, just they follow different forms. Right now, in order to, well, now we have to understand properly in a little more in depth how mantras are put together. Right, right? now, first key elements. I'm going to talk about key elements for a mantra before we move on to beaches. Right. For a mantra to be effective, it must first have a specific tone. The tone matches the objective the individual wants to achieve. Okay. Right. It must have a specific tone, and it must not. Deviate from that tone. Also, a mantra must follow a specific rhythm. In Hinduism, Buddhism, and Tibet, specifically, explain that. that Can it, I intervene for a minute? When, when he's saying tone, right. when, when we do the classes, one of the first things that is critical, what is his sound? What is your sound? Right. And you, everybody's sound is different. Totally. But when you find the proper sound and you focus on that sound, that's when you start saying the mantras. You just can't say it just so. Right. If you do, if you do it's just a bunch of words. The power, the meaning, the direction mm -hmm. isn't there. Okay, so go ahead. Right, good. So Master clarified that. And then it must have a rhythm. You can't say a mantra like Om Namah Shivaya. Then Om Namah Shivaya. Then Om Namah Shivaya. You are breaking the vibrations, energy. And we're going to get into that when we get into beaches. And the frequencies. Right. So a mantra must follow a specific rhythm. It said if you're, if you're doing it internal, it must have some form of rocking. It must have a physical vibration creating a rhythm. Hmm. So like if you are saying it constantly, and then we're getting to more how to really recite the mantra, where if you're saying Om Namah Shivaya, just basic, it must be Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Shivai. One constant rhythm, that rhythm must not drop speed, it must not change at all. The rhythm must be constant. Right. Now when understanding the basis of mantras, now we're going to get into beaches. Now, I sure you heard, um, this is the beach mantra for this deity. This is the beach mantra for this. This is the beach. But what does beach mean? Root? In a way, yes. Close. Very close. Okay. Right? Now in Sanskrit, beach is really pronounced as bija. Right. And a beach really is, a f it's a single syllable tone that right. carries a specific frequency vibration. Now, Omkar, by me saying that, right? If I were to ask you from past shows or from your own experience, what is God? If you were to describe God? Hmm. Truth. Truth. But what does God, if God have to exist in every single thing at the same time, in, in, even in the cosmos, Parallel universe, every part, every planet, at the same time, simultaneously, mm -hmm. what God is? Everything. Everything, a little deeper. Well, the root. Well, the root, but God has to be energy. Okay, okay. Everything, what is God in every span of life, in every span, what they come as Lord Shiva is forms for us to understand. And we'll get into that as we get in further in Beejas. Now, in order God to be in everything, he needs to be, in order for him to be part of everything, he must be energy. 
So right. God is really divine intelligence of energy. Okay. Now, what does energy produces? Vibration. Vibration, sound frequencies. Yeah. Right? All right. It is said that when you use beaches, now beaches carries the sound frequency. Now, just put it out there, the scriptures said that there are 33 million deities. All right. So then it's safe to say each one of the deities, different forms God took into those deities carries different alterations of frequencies. Right. Which means, if we were to find the seeds of a deity, there must be at least 33 million beaches okay. to represent the energy frequency of a deity. Because God is pure energy. Right. Right? Let me interrupt again. You know, when you're around the big overhead power lines. Yeah. And if you get close enough, like close to the base of it, you'll hear a hum. Yeah. That is the frequency yeah. of that going across, the yeah. sound, right? So every, what he's trying to say is everything, no matter what, has a different frequency, a different pitch. And this is what's critical when he starts getting into the mantras, installing the beach. Because if God is energy, don't you need to have a frequency in the mantra to connect with God? I want you to understand, when we say learn how to make a connection, it's actually frequencies. Yeah. Even in meditation, your focal point produces a frequency. frequency. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to add that into this. Okay. Good. Yeah, and beaches now, it is said in Buddhism, now Buddhism has a wide base of understanding when it comes to beaches, mantras, even the Tibets, even um, the Aztecs, and we will get into all that and cross-reference the different beliefs and understanding and how they incorporate beaches. Now, we're going to get into some of the seeds, right, the beaches. Now, it's said in mantras, really the roots, the, the seed of the fruits is actually hidden in the beaches of the mantra. Now, I want to be clear about this. No one could just, when I started going to beaches, just take a beach and create a mantra. Beaches have specific places they need to be placed in a mantra, and it uses science to understand that. Meaning that the words of any sentence produce vibration. It is said in science and physics mm -hmm. that sound never stops traveling. Never. So if you say I wouldn't know, it travels throughout the universe, through the butterfly effect, leave the universe and goes into the cosmos. Right. So sound never stops. These words that we are uttering here today never stop. We may stop hearing it, but it's vibrating at a frequency continuously in the universe. Yeah. So it takes understanding the results you want to create. It takes science and having a proper guru. And I want to say that and look at the public must have a proper guru who understands and can train you on how to use beaches for the maximum benefit. So now we're going to get into the exciting part. We're going to go into beaches and different, different aspects of beaches. Hmm. Now, as I said earlier, beaches are really single syllable frequencies and they represent... Do you have any questions, Omkar? No, not really. I listen. Like, <laughs> but have you ever probably. heard these things before? Um, yeah, was here mention at the beach like three different deities especially right. the major the major one that everybody would know about but um nobody really explains what beach is or how it's placed or yeah. why it's placed yeah or, or what's like the purpose of it or anything like that. they just right. say what the beach mantra is the sun but now, i hear the explanation for now not to take over from him but Remember, we have earth languages. Mm -hmm. Then God has his language, which is totally separate right. from what man has learned here. Now, he'll tell you, even in God's languages, language, there are beaches. Yes. Okay. But most of the language 
that the deities actually talk is two letter words. Yeah. Right. They're very short. Mm -hmm. But it's so powerful yeah. when you just start talking that language. Yeah. Your hair raises as soon as you hit to the second word. Yeah. Right? So when you give a guru mantra, if a student is serious, you would give their guru mantra in the deity's language. Yeah. yeah. And that will actually enhance the rise spirituality 100 times faster. Okay. okay, so go ahead. Good, so we're going to get into some beaches now. Right, and as Sokarakra Master said, the beaches is the key. It's said that in scriptures in Hinduism, it's said that in Sanskrit, there has this translation. It said that if someone is starting off from new, someone who's new and wants to learn and wants to elevate themselves spiritually, the best way to start if they don't know the language or they don't know mantras, the best way to start Omkar is with beaches. Right. Because the beaches represent specific deities and you are calling those energies. It is said that the beaches used to invoke that deity and place him in your mantra. Okay. Right? So we're going to get into some beaches now and what they mean and the understanding of how they work in the universe. So by me talking for the past few minutes, there is one famous beach that everybody uses. You want to try your hand at it? You want to see if you might be able to call one of the beaches? So a very simple one. Well, the only one popping into my mind right now is, well, you're just telling me about Doom, so that's the only thing popping into Well, Doom, <laughs> well, Doom and Doom is two different beaches. Right. And that's where people make their mistake. Yeah, because, but I'll get into the first beach and then come to that. Okay. Because this is the mother of all beaches. Right. And it's Om. Now, I always grew up with pundits telling me, and people in the public could attest to this. Where's Om when you ask a pundit? That is God, that represents God. All right. But is Om God's name, or is it. What is Om? Om, it is said in the beginning, and I'll go to Christianity and then come back to Hinduism. It's said in the Om, there was no, in, in Christianity, there was nothing. And then there was this sound. That sound they're talking about was Om. Okay. Right? Right. It, there was the word. Right? In Hinduism, it is said, and it has, in the Shiva Mahapuran, has the best analogy. It is said that in the beginning, there was nothing again. But then, there was a sound traveling, Omkar. That is how they said to pronounce it. So Omkar, technically, you cause the creation of the universe. The Big Bang. <laughs> you cause the Big Bang. The it actual is said, one carried, yeah. mm -hmm. and then cut. cut. So that right there was the Big Bang. Yeah. Okay, okay. People don't understand this. No. Yeah. Okay, but there was something special with the Om. Go ahead and say it. Right, so the Om actually carried the... Free so Master asked me a question, and... I asked a couple pundits this question actually, and I got no answer. Mm. I asked a couple pundits that they said the trilogy, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, they existed. But where did they come from? Mm. Where did the trilogy come from? There was never a sound answer that I got over the years. Okay. Because I understand God took a form for man to understand, which is Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. And when they took a human form, it also follows the human aspects for we to understand. Right. Right? For us to learn, have a map, have the tools possible and, ex and existing for us to start a spiritual journey. As the purpose of a religion, so we to provide the foundation for an individual to have a spiritual journey. Right? Right. So, sometimes religion kind of don't incorporate spirituality fully. Right? Right. So... The three of them come from pure energy, and Om is actually said in scriptures that is a direct frequency of what we know and what man knows as God. Om, that is why every mantra has Om to the front of it. Because Om exists. As, it, as Master was saying, Om, it was traveling 
at a monot it had a dual tone a dual, a tone. dual tone which was shiva and shakti shiv shakti traveling together and it said when the both energy was traveling there was female mixed with male tone dual tone right and while traveling when the both collided that was when car came in right. and when they both collided scientists picked up from there they right. said the universe start from the big bang but what was the surge of the big bang it was the collision of those both energies and the origin and the origin yeah which was traveling as om kar and that created all the cosmos that is why everything even scientists study the moon and it vibrates its basic frequency it vibrates at om the frequency of om yeah most planets that is why we're going to get in now it said that om is the mother of all beaches buddhism said that om is the mother of all beaches from om birthed all the beaches now it's safe to say that if the essence of god was here in om and from that divine god no one could understand that that is neti neti neither this nor that it's pure energy but it took a form which was brahma vishnu shiva hanuman durga all the deities coming down the hierarchy it took forms so it's safe to say that if om was the frequency of that primordial force it's safe to say all other beaches representing all other deities came from om okay right now when you're coming down further now we're going to get into some of these beaches other than om as i said 33 million now we can't go through 33 million on tv but one thing i wanted to point out the frequencies mm-hmm. when they came and merged together and it wasn't by accident it was perfect timing by god himself all right which created the cup right now from there that big bang within the big bang created one atom okay now everything on earth and everything in the universe is created from that one, one atom. atom okay this is where science caught up right they say yes there was a primary first atom okay but that was written in the scriptures thousands of years yes. before the scientists even got up to that yeah so i want people to clearly understand that before and he said it at the beginning of the show before you say a mantra you need to know the theory behind it you got to know what the mantras are you got to know the meaning of the mantras the meaning of the beej of the mantra and then he'll tell you the different frequencies within the mantra okay so go ahead good and then as moving on master you know the next beej like lord shiva every deity has a specific beej because each deity frequency is different right to represent that deity and like lord shiva and you hear someone said om namah shivaya right mm-hmm. now it has the beej om which makes it a powerful mantra now that's namaha on the sun and namaha now is where you're giving salutations you are bowing and shivaya also means you're submitting yeah. right to him everything the ego loss all these unwanted qualities but did you know other than om lord shiva has his own beej his seal to use in his invocation his mantras okay and it's spelled if you were to spell it to try to pronounce it in english is it's it's h r right o u m hrum and it must be a flutter on it all hrum like you say in whom but with the r hrum and that is not like me just saying hrum is supposed to carry the frequency at the end hrum that is the frequency the hum is yeah. lord shiva so it is said to gain the blessings of lord shiva and to gain now master clarifies one thing all the time desires in scriptures 
through my research, doing research, it said that it will fulfill all your desires. Right. It is everything, what it really means to the public, it really means that everything that is predestined pertaining to your karmas, we supposed to be able to overcome desires, control desires, to so be you, spiritual. So you don't focus on materialistic desires mm -hmm. right. or physical desires. Right. So we to focus on the desires of wanting what is predestined to come to your life. What Pre was written before you were born. That is what, is the, that, is what that word desire means when it comes to scriptures. It is not desires wanting a vehicle. Want in a home. No, if that is written for you, if you do that beach and you focus on what it is, is predestined, what was there for you, pertaining to your karmas, that is what will come for you. So sometimes saying you know what? I like this girl. And you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to do beach job for Lord Shiva, right? You. Hroom, hroom. But that'll work out. It's like the time working is not because of that, it's because of your desires. Your mind focusing on materialist, on the physical. Yeah. Right? So that beach alone invokes Lord Shiva. And the beach is used to bring him, call his energy. You are calling that energy Lord Shiva, not Lord Shiva in that human form. It's that essence, Lord Shiva. Even Vishnu have his own beach. And I wouldn't have thought for a million years this was his beach. It's spelled as, in English, D-A-M. Dumb. Carrying that frequency. Okay. So, now, some people might say, you know what? I know Om Namo Narayan Ay Namaha. You know what? I'm going to put in Dumb. But where are you placing Dumb? This is where a guru. A guru. Comes in. show you. Right? This is where being properly trained in sound, understanding energy. How energy rises. How it drops how it affects by different syllables in words, in sentences, is how you place that beach. Now in reciting mantra, it is said that the beach is supposed to be held as precedence over the mantra. So like the beach for Durga, and I'm going to clarify that now, is doom. But listen to the clarification. It's not doom, which is D-H-O-O-M, Right. That is actually beach for a whole different female deity, which is Dumavati. Right? Most people don't even... I didn't even know what, who was Dumavati until I met Master Eric. Right. Right? And she's a goddess to help you gain that willpower to overcome, to destroy fear, to overcome fear. Right? But Dum, the U-M, Dum is for Durga. Now, when you're saying Om Dum Durga, you know, I'm going down the road. When I started Mass, I said, okay, you know what Durga, you know what Devi Mantra? I was like, yeah, no, Om Dum Durga He said, recite it. I was like, okay. I know the Om Dum Durga He Namah, so I recite it. Om Dum Durga He Namah, Om Dum Durga He Namah, Om Dum Durga He Namah. He said, stop. He said, you're putting them to sleep. That is what Master told me. He said, you're putting them to sleep. He said, that beach supposed to be above everything else. So it's Om Dum Durga He Namah. That is how you recite that mantra. And you realize... Om Dum Durgaye. Durgaye, that Aye at the end, means you are calling. You are submitting. You are calling with compassion. You are commanding. So that also raises. So most people here say, sit down by, they're doing puja, Om Dum Durgaye, Om Dum Durgaye, Om Dum Durgaye, Right? I was giving you a story before we started to do the show that I fell asleep playing music. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a satsang, because just imagine if that person was reading and was putting me to sleep and I was actively playing music, just imagine what it was doing to the deity. If I were to put it in my own understanding, right? So, as you say, a beach it holds precedence, like a beach for Ganesh. You now, Ganesh has different beaches due to his different forms, every deity has different forms, like. Ganesh, it has 32 forms of Ganesh, right? And there's recent research showing that there may be a 33rd. There is a 33rd. There is a 33rd form of Ganesh. And Master will be going over that very soon. See that, see that one sitting right there on my stand? No, the red one? Oh, yeah. That's the 33rd form. I had it shipped in. But what, what he's saying is correctly 
is correct and it's accurate. But there's one thing to the Durga mantra that I thought you would ask about. Why is the IA emphasized? So you heard the beach. Yeah. And then also it's not der. It's der. Yes. Der. Der guy. Guy. Der guy. Okay. So explain what I. But yeah, so I just went over that. I, when you raise that there, and it has, when I researched this from different religions, different scriptures, I came up with 122 different explanations for I. Right? One explanation is that you are calling that deity to come with respect. But now. But now. You're telling him to, so when you say, um, doom, you call that beach, that frequency of Maha Durga. And that is the beach for not just Durga, but Maha Durga. Maha. Yeah. Right? That form, Maha Durga, the first. And then when you say, Aye, you're telling she, you're, in, you're requesting it now. In I, right? And as we, yeah, you was going to say something? Well, I claim the truth unconsciously because I was planning to ask you after I finished, but um, mm -hmm. so for those who would say you're commanding God to come now, mm -hmm. so that's why they chant it quietly. Like let me just say, right? Mm -hmm. Somebody will say, well, you know, they, they have an issue with how you saying to chant it because Mm -hmm. It's what, how you put it across is like a command in God to come. No. Right. Where you're supposed to be like if asking. You, if you remember what he humble. just said, you are, say the doom. Right. That is her frequency. Right. So now you've just got her attention. Mm -hmm. And when you go with IA, yeah. you are respectfully. Oh. You never command. Yeah. You respectfully call her down now. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. But command was a strong word. Okay. Yeah. But in reality, that's what it is. Yeah. But it's respectfully asking right. her to come and take her seat. Yeah. Now, those who do it the way they do it, yeah. Omkar, I want you to go to their prayers. Feel the energy on that baby. Minute. Right. Or do you want to feel the energy on the baby that makes you sweat? sweat. That the deities are setting on that baby and all the dia flames from going from this goes up to six to eight inches. Mm -hmm. Now you know they're present. Okay. But what people don't understand, and I'm not trying to take your class, no master. <laughs> but deities just don't come from the east. Right. When you call them with their beaches and the mantras. They come from all different directions. And the one that's most consistent is Lord Shiva. He comes from behind the shorta. Yeah. Okay, you feel that energy. The energy's behind you. Okay. So you have direction, you got sound, you got rhythm, and you have to put everything together to make that mantra effective. Yeah. So if you're just mumbling it, well, that means the shrota is mumbling it too. And then even when he gets into what swaha is, right, which he will, right? Do you know it has to be perfect rhythm, perfect timing when you do howling? So what I mean by that, whoever is conducting, the pundit or whoever, he's got to have that rhythm, that frequency. When he says swaha, that shrota has to say swaha at the same time. same time. At the same time as they're both saying swaha, that offering got to be in the fire. But as you watch, the conductor, he's on to the next mantra, why he's just now making his offering. 
So the timing is off. So that means that offering is null and void. There are rules when it comes to do how, right? So I just wanted to add that because timing, rhythm, frequency is the key. God, my pause raising. But I'll let you go ahead then. Great. So Master thanks for you know clarifying that too. You know, and, um, and as I say, I has over 127 different meanings. And actually one, he just said it. It means to respectfully call. It also means to talk in compassion. But in this understanding of the structures of mantras through research, that must be elevated. Mm-hmm. So that's why when I recited Om, mm-hmm. Dum, mm-hmm. Durgae, it must be elevated. And then you say Namaha, right? And it must follow that rhythm, that tone, and it must have your sound. Now, most people think that when they, re- when they recite mantras, which I was guilty of this as well, I always thought the way I was saying it, Om Dum Durga Enama was my sound. Then when I met Master, he said, that's not your sound. He showed me their way to sit, muscles to acti- activate, postures to be in, Define your sound. Mm. Now, you, you would know me from prior. I'm, I, I'm into music. Yeah. I sing local classical. And what it is I notice, and not, not myself alone, but in singing, when I got this training and finding my song, I realized that my singing improved. And not just me, folks around me. So I just say, hey, Shiv, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Because you are improving. Learning your sound is what will command. Everybody's sound, as Master said, is different. Yeah. Like the beach, as we move on now, as the beach for Ganesh. A basic beach for Ganesh is gum. Not gum, but G-A-M. Gum. And just as we cite it as Om Dum Durga E Namaha, it's as we, Om Gum Ganapatae Namaha. It must follow. And he realized the IA was elevated again. Right? And at Masa, I'm not sure if you'll allow me, but I get throw in like a tough one. <laughs> you could give him a sample. Right? So, I, uh, yeah. So, Masa, one he always uses on his baby when he's doing puja. Now, for I those- use three mantras to invoke Lord Ganesh. I use one that's super powerful. For second. Right. I use the normal one first. Om Gam Ganapadaye Nama. And then I end it with a soft right. mantra. So what we did, you hit the beach, you raise the frequency, you ask them respectively to come down. The second mantra invokes almost everybody on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. Beaches and in so that mantra. Okay, a lot of people say a mantra close. Remember, there's different types of mantras. But they say it, but they don't know who they're asking to come. This is where it dies down. It dissipates. But I don't want people to get confused. They can learn the beach, the IA. But now, before you can mumble it, you got to get Sidhi Sidhi. over it. And that takes millions of Jap with that mantra to get the power over that. Okay, most people don't take the time to do that. Some some books say, oh, if you do 100,000, you'll get the beach. Trust me, it takes more than that. Yeah. Okay. So once you have the formula of what we've been talking about, the rhythm, the frequency, and the sound, the meaning of the beach, the rise and fall of the frequency within the mantra, and the city, now you're getting that full energy on the baby. Okay. okay? Good. So I could give them the... All right, so 
Mas, as he said, the second mantra invokes almost everybody on Ibedi. And I'll break it down as I continue, right? So this mantra he uses, and listen to clear, clearly how I say it, right? Vakratudukum sahi, krim hrim shrim gam ganapati, var var sarvajanam me vashamanae. Now, how much beaches you heard in that? Now, if you put in Om in the beginning, it would have made it more beaches, but it already contains beaches. Yeah. Which is, well, if you had Om, it would have been Om. Right. Then, Krim, Krim, Shrim, Gum, four beaches, one after the other. Yeah. Now, most people don't understand Krim, Krim, Shrim. Shrim is a beach that represents. Mahalachmi. Okay. Mahalachmi, which is the Lachmi before Adi Lachmi, Gaja Lachmi, Vira Lachmi, Santana Lachmi, Dhana Lachmi, Ashwarya Lachmi, all the Lachmis. This is Mahalachmi. Okay, okay. Hrim is the beach that invokes Mahalachmi again, Mahasaraswati, because it has different syllables that incorporate multiple beaches. So it's Yehe Krim. Hrim, Hrim is the one I'm going to explain now, which is Mahalachmi, Mahasaraswati, and Mahakali. Yeah. And then there are mantras where you could have 18, 36 beaches in the mantra, right? Mm -hmm. And even more. But you have to know what you're doing. Number two, he said it, but he was being very polite. And I still want him to be polite. But there were pundits in the past that told him how to say Dum. I can explain that story. Explain. So what happened is when I was learning the same mantras, I went to pundits because I wanted to enhance myself way before I met Master. Yeah. Right? Because I, for some reason, I worked, I do everything, but I felt drawn to that spiritual path. And I was looking for ways to elevate. And I showed there are people out there watching the program that one was looking for ways to elevate and is looking for ways to elevate. Right? And I went to pundits and I was saying, Om Dum Durgai Namaha. And the pundits specifically told me, now this is probably lack of understanding. It could be with the way it was passed down from his guru to him. It's yeah. just his understanding. Right? He made sure and specified that I must say, Dum which is the H-O-O-M. But it's only after years of chanting the mantra that way, meeting Master and doing research. Because Master is one person, when he's training a student, he don't spoon feed. He gives you this much, but it's you to do your due diligence and research and be round in that area. Yeah. Right? And he always questions you. He always asks you on the spot, in front of people, Shiv, what's this? And you, in one second, you must be able to say that answer from mine. He made sure told me, Shiv, when you go on TV today, you're not going to use any notes in front here. So make sure whatever you're going to say, it's in here. And that is a standard that he always keeps. And I'm just, I'm not his only student. He has many other students that is just like me, that is versed in other areas, understanding different aspects of spirituality and so on. And he always makes sure that you learn in the proper way. And while I was reciting this, he was like, stop. He was always stern, not quarreling or boofing, but he was stern when it comes to doing spirituality. He's a very fun person. But when it comes to doing writing with spirituality, he always stops you and makes sure. So I was reciting, he asked me, during a puja time, he said, say the Bij Mantra for Durga. So I was like, Om Dum, Om Dum Durga e Namaha. Om Dum Durga E Nama. He says, stop. What are you saying? He said, say back the beach. I said, Om Dum. He said, no, it's Dum. There's no H in that. And he made me recite it until I got it in my head. That is not H. Yeah. Now and tell him dum. the meaning difference when you say it the other way. Right. So Dum, D-H-U-M or D-H-O-O-M, is actually the beach mantra for Dumavati which I said it earlier, which is the beach and she, for Dumavate and she helps overcome if you have any obstacles. She helps you gain that ability to overcome that obstacles, not remove it. 
All right. But give you that so, ability. So initially what you're doing, you are calling the wrong beach, sending the wrong frequency and to the wrong deity. And mentally focusing on a different deity. Yeah. That now affects the energy. Because as I said, mantras is tools of thoughts focusing the mind, is using the mind of thoughts to focus the mind on a specific objective. So if you are saying something, but your mind is on something else, it affects the energy. Now, when I recite it, I know Ma, Durga, Gumavate, they knew that I didn't know better. But this is why they put me in the right places to learn the correct stuff. Yeah. To, to be able to differentiate, fine tune. And a lot of people will do prayers, will do mantras, not see the benefit. And sometimes the smallest, simple little mistakes will affect that whole puja energy. Like when we do puja, when we finish, we had them up the floor because there's a puddle of sweat in front of us. Wherever we sit, clothes soaking wet. That is, that is the energy. And my was correct. That was one thing that caught me in the beginning. How could a flame on a normal clay deer raise eight, nine inches? It blew my mind. But now every single deer I light home raises above six inches. Every single one. All day until the oil finish, until that day out. The flame maintains at that level. When you practice. Now, when the flame is there, it has a certain amount of energy. But if you can maximize that energy, Omkar, you can get the maximum benefits. Right? Also and in Hawan. Yeah. The Hawan. When you do all the beaches correctly. And the order of the deities correctly. That how and fire, you never have to add ghee. You never have to add camphor. Nothing. One key thing, you never had to add. And by the time wood. you are done, and you say Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Hari Om Shanti. Ashes. Pure ash. There's not one piece of wood in there. So what I'm saying, even Lord Agni, either have him there, or are you invoking him there? There's a difference. Right. Okay. And the one we did on the beach, that fire ended up yes. 10 feet, 12 feet high. In that hole. It so, was, hmm. so what I'm trying to say, what you put into prayers yeah. is what you get out of prayers. Now, it's not that we do prayers to gain. Don't, don't misquote me. Your main objective with prayers and how you say mantras, when you say a mantra to a deity, you have to give it with all your heart, mind, and soul. When you give it with those three qualities within you, it is so pure. So you're doing it for them. That, that puja or howan is not for you or the spectators. It's for God and the forms of God. That's where people make their mistake. You know, that's why my guru always told me, when you do puja, don't invite a bunch of people. You invite the people to come after you're done with the puja to partake in the food and everything else. Because that time is an, in, it's an intimate time between you and God. And then he's going to start talking about the planetary energies yeah. and the beaches. Then you'll know why you never do certain things on the Beatty. Okay? So go ahead. Good. And Albert, as he talked about the beach, right? There was, did you know there are two word mantras <laughs> that has way more power than ten words in a mantra? When you just activate beaches like... Saraswati Beach. He was doing this for a specific purpose by the beach. It was Om Aim Swaha. Now pay attention to that. As I illustrated, it's not M um, or Am. Um, it's I'm like I apostrophe M. Yeah. It's I'm, and that is the beach from Maha Saraswati. And that beach, when you recite that beach, it is to give you what knowledge but to help you unlock that knowledge that is already existing in the universe. 
to the acoustic records. That is what he was doing for everyone to benefit so that they can rise to have that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding to achieve what they have to achieve, to realize what is their purpose. And we was doing Hawaiian with Om, Aim, Swaha. But then he broke the mantra down into just Om, Swaha. And that was when the flame started to go 10 feet. There was a point in time in the Hawaiian we had to move back. And we was already about five feet away from the Hawaiian. Because the flame ignited so powerful where there was red marks on our skin after. That's his energy. And what the beach Om and Swaha. Most people, like if Omkari always here in every puja, when they're doing Hawan, or even in mantras have Swaha and or during the mantras. Like a, but what does Swaha mean? I don't know. <laughs> right. No, Swaha has many meanings. Right? In the Aztecs, they said Swaha is, when they say Om Namah Shivaya Swaha, it means I bow and give salutations to Lord Shiva and that's it. Final. Swaha means it's a terminology, period, nothing else. We don't want anything, we're doing it for you. Right? Okay. Then there is like, when you are saying mantras, like a famous mantra, the Gayatri mantra, Om Bhur Bhur Swaha. What does Swaha in there mean? It has a totally different meaning. It means submitting the ego. Submitting all the unwanted qualities that keeps to them. a human grounded. What we're not supposed to have to be spiritual. Which is heat, lust, anger. And we are submitting that in that mantra. Okay, okay. But then when you are doing a Hawan, the most important reason why they say Swaha it's because, and I did not know this until I started to research, and I got so excited. If you ask Master, there was days, I started to research all other things other than beaches. Right? And in reciting Swaha, learning Swaha, King Daksha didn't just, I was taught King Daksha had one daughter, which was Parvati, or Sati. I didn't know he had 25 daughters, and one of the daughters was Swaha Devi. And she fell in love with Agni. And, but Agni paid her no mind. But Agni had a situation where he study fell in love with all the subterrestrial's wife. So he got to a point where he got so fed up that he said, you know what? I'm going to do tapasya, which is a form of a penance. Right. Some way. So when you want to achieve, develop, you need to give. You need to do a penance to enhance, to develop, to open yourself. And he went to do a specific penance to get rid of that to find a consort. And while going, he decided to go to the forest. Now Swaha Devi knew what he was trying to achieve. And she said, this is my chance. She went to that forest and took the various forms of the wives of the Saptarishis and went and it seduced him and made union. And from that birth of their children, like Skanda, who is actually the god of war. I didn't even know Agni had children. But because of her purity and love, right? He said, you have, you have given me everything that I have always wanted. He wanted to be with those various wives. And he asked her to be his wife. And she also got the boon that anything coming through Agni must have her name on it. That is why whatever you offer in the fire, it must end with Swaha. And it must end on Swaha, not before Swaha, and not, not after. after Swaha. So what yeah. I'm saying, so when you start <laughs> recording, watch the how and being done. You'll see there is no timing and no rhythm. So what I'm saying, so who's benefiting from the how? Right. See, this is where, why I want to do and or we want to do the shows, the programs. Yeah. Give the people the knowledge. Let them start doing it the proper way. Yeah. Okay, but again, you have to practice and get city if you want the full effect. Yeah. Okay, and it takes time. Yeah. It but had one thing I wanted to point out. It had one thing I wanted to point out because you had mentioned a very simple mantra, which is the one for Saraswati, which is the two beach, Om, Aim, Swaha. 
in but Hawaii. For the people who watch it, not to just run out and chant that mantra, no, they have other criteria to chant in those kind of mantras. Yes, you need to it. get Siddhi over Shri Maha Beach, which is Om Aim Saraswati Namaha. Right. And it's not Om Aim Saraswati Namaha. It's Om Aim Saraswati Namaha. And you must get that beach now. Get in, get in Siddhi. I haven't ha I don't have Siddhi yet over most of those beaches. Because I only did a couple thousand, couple hundred thousand job. Right. But I know we're near gaining that. Yeah. That is something you have to give that time. Hours are jobs. So as you would know, every day I have thousands of jobs to do. Right. And I still doing it for almost like two years now. And still don't have Siddhi over those mantras. And I'm still doing Siddhis. Yeah. Yeah. I, he'll tell you, I've got a lot of them, but there's still more. There's endless amount. Yeah. So my wife told him the other day, he said he just accomplished 2 million in 30 days. And I did. Yeah. yeah. And I got city in 30 days, but yeah. 2 million. Now calculate how many hours that is per month. Yeah. And the best time for me to do it is at night. I'm at work, everybody else is asleep, phone's not gonna ring. And you can really concentrate and really get into the meaning and the depth of the beach. Yeah. So, and the reason we do it, Omkar, if you don't have the beaches, how can you help someone? How could you heal someone? It's impossible. You just can't utter a mantra true it'll be powerless right this is what needs to be taught and i want the pundits to start teaching getting in depth whoever's in your temple and the people that's interested have classes and teach them a lot of pundits know these things maybe not to the extent but they know enough to get the people on the right track yeah. right and that's critical. Let's help the individuals that go to the temples, uplift those individuals. And as you uplift an individual, secretly, unknowingly, you're uplifting yourself. So everybody is benefiting from receiving knowledge. Yeah. And it's critical. Do you, I think we're going to have to have a part two. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so next week we'll come in part two. See, I did him a week ago. I said, you got one week to gather all information, certify the information, remember the information, and you're going to do the show. Yeah. Yesterday, I just told two more. You have this topic, you have this topic. Go reference it. You will give me the show in midweek. Yeah. So what I'm saying, this is how a guru teaches. Yeah. And besides knowing everything else and studying everything else, you need a well-rounded student. Yeah. That is critical. So if he goes to a temple someday and somebody asks him a question, I'm just going to sit back because I know he's going to answer it. You know, that's what makes a guru proud, not in a bad way. A good way. But this, this research, this is something that, well, just for the viewers out there to find out, right? Is from scripture, books, or is from the internet? Combination. Combination. Now, when you find something on the internet, you need to cross-reference because there could be anything on the internet. Right. So when I found that, okay, this Swaha Devi, or Swaha, or Aim, I went straight and started to research scriptures. Right. started to check because I also have a lot of books and I started to cross-reference. I started to get the scriptures online that in PDF forms and I started to read. So it took hours of making sure I tried to find this. Yeah. Make sure if it was not cross-reference in scriptures, I would not have said it. Okay. But it cross reference in multiple religions as well. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember you re re reference the Aztecs as using Swaha as well. Yeah. yeah, they use Swaha yeah. and they also do Hawans. Do everything. And we'll get in more to that to the next program. Yeah, we'll get into it. Um, guess what? The Christians used to do howans. Right. Yeah, we talk about that. Right. right. So this is where I'm saying, man, 
has interfered from the beginning of time to now. Mm -hmm. Right? But anyhow, Omkar, it's been a pleasure being with you again. And Siobhan, you know, I'm looking forward to doing the show next week. And uh, I want you to go a little deeper when we do the show next week. Everybody, I hope you had your paper and pencils to write your notes. Next week, have it ready. Because we're going to come with part two of mantras and beaches. See Tehran and have a great week. We extend to you an invitation to join Master Eric and Omkar for the weekly program Between God and Us every Sunday evening from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. exclusively on Sankia Television. Between God and us. Knowledge to free your soul.